So today I would like to introduce the development and application tool for cardiac exercise physiology assessment in zebrafish. I am Chong De Xiao from Zhongyuan Christian University. So today I would like to introduce the development and application tool for cardiac and exercise physiology assessment in zebrafish. So I am the Professor Chong De Xiao from the Department of Bioscience and Technology, Zhongyuan Christian University. So Zhongyuan Christian University is established in 1955. The location is close to Taipei here. Our department, uh, most of the study focus on the rodent and also using zebrafish for biomedical research. And we are ranking for the private university, uh, ranking number one in Taiwan. So my lab, actually, we are recruiting the international student. So some students from the Asia country, like the Vietnam, from Indonesia, and from India, and also some students from Pakistan. So we provide full scholarship to young scientists to start it, biotechnology and master or PhD program. So our previous study actually interesting and focus on the some several different topic, including the obesity. So we using transgenic technology to establish transgenic line to showing the obesity phenotype in zebrafish. And this uh, uh, research is cooperation with the uh, Makai Hospital in Taiwan. And the second topic we are started for the cancer biology using zebrafish. We always brush in some uncle gene in zebrafish skin, and eventually we can find the skin tumor formation. And later we can use in this uh, uh, zebrafish line to screen in some anti-cancer drugs. And the third topic, we are using zebrafish to do the drug screening or the toxicity assessment. For example, we started for the angiogenesis, cell proliferation, a cell death, or the anti-inflammation. And the fourth topic we are starting is today we like to uh, uh, report as using the uh, some innovative tool to study the zebrafish physiology or the behavior. So this is the outline of today my talk. The first one I would like to introduction to using a low cost setting for detection cardiac rhythm in zebrafish. So before I'm talking, I would like to introduction what is the current uh, protocol or method to detection the cardiac rhythm in zebrafish. This is the video to show you the zebrafish heartbeat. As you can see here, the zebrafish on day, uh, day three to day five, you can see the beautiful, nice looking archium pumping and uh, also coupling with the ventricle pumping here. Uh, because the zebrafish embryo during the early development is transparent, so you are very easy to see the uh, coordination of the archium ventricle uh, beating. So in zebrafish embryo, we can base on the image to, uh, to detection of the cardiac rhythm. And also we develop some tool that able to detection the cardiac rhythm automatically. This is called a commercial software. And for the adult, we can use in the uh, echo or using MRI to detection the cardiac rhythm. And also can use in the prop attached to the heart surface that we are able to detect the ECG signal. It's called the uh, uh, electrocardiophysiology uh, uh, signal. And also some people would like to use in the remote monitoring that able to detect the cardiac reason non-invasively in zebrafish. So this is the overview. And this paper already be published in 2020 this year by my lab. So the first two I would like to introduction to you is the uh, my student Bonnie published in 2018 
in the paper of inventions. The title is a simple image J bath method to detection or to major cardiac rhythm in zebrafish embryo. So the principle for this detection is very easy. As you can see uh, in the zebrafish embryo, they have the one chamber for the atrium, one chamber for the uh, ventricle. The color is laboring in the red or in the blue. So in the normal condition, actually the zebrafish cardiac rhythm is quite a well synchronous. Uh, atrium beating later uh, come with the ventricle beating. So the signal from the atrium to ventricle is one to one signal. But if the heartbeat getting faster, we call the tachycardia, as you can see here, in specific timing, it's more peak. But the beating is still synchronous. And if the cardiac beating slow down, we call the uh, brachycardia. Uh, the most worse is the arrhythmia, as you can see, uh, the beating, atrium to ventricle is 2 to 1. Yeah, this is the, uh, we call the irregularity of the heartbeat. So in this protocol, we can use in the image uh, J to analyze the signal from the artery and ventricle. Eventually, we are able to quantification of the cardiac rhythm. And the setting is very simple. As you can see, uh, this is the, uh, we call the dissecting microscopy and covering with one a camera or CCD. And this is the XY motorized stage so that we are able to uh, uh, fine-tune, fine adjustment of the position of the zebrafish. And the first step we are recording for the image of the zebrafish. And the frame rate is setting as a 60 frames per second. And later we use an image J to extraction their dynamic pixel. Eventually we use in the time analysis plugin to analyze the uh, sequential chronology of the uh, heartbeat. So here is the video to show you this is the normal heartbeat pattern of the uh, control fish. Archon to ventricle one to one, but after uh, the chemical as the measle treatment, so you can see the fish already got arrhythmia. They are showing the irregularity of the archon and the ventricle beating. So based on this video, we can extract some information based on the uh, image dynamic pixel change. So here is an example to show you the principle. You can see here, this is the blood cell in the atrium chamber. So once the cell come into the chamber, so the light pass intensity will be blocked by the, uh, the blood cell. So the intensity will going down. But at this moment, the ventricle is still empty, so the pixel will be really high. And once the uh, atrium contraction, so the blood cell will pump into the ventricle, so now the ventricle dynamic pixel intensity will going down because the uh, light pass be uh, masking by the blood cell. But in the atrium ar now is empty, so the signal is going coming back getting higher. So if you can check in the signal in the atrium or in the ventricle, so you can see the peak in the red or the sick peak in the blue. And later we uh, superimpose these two signals together. So you are able to see the atrium and ventricle uh, signal is quite synchronized. And later we use in the uh, Fourier transformation to transformation the uh, the, the signal later we can see this is the major domain of the frequency is around two hertz. It means one second we got two bit. Equivalent to one minute is around maybe 120 to 150 bit per minute. So using this methodology, we also application to other fish. For example, this fish a little bit like the convict chicken so the, in the embryonic stage, their embryo is a little bit uh, transparent. So we're still able to see the uh, cardiac rhythm here, arching and ventricle. So we're using our algorithm to detection, also can found very nicely or well, arching and ventricle bit. So the conclusion is this method is not only application for zebrafish, 
also can be application to other uh, uh, fish so that can uh, help a lot of people to start it using this simple method and we also cooperation with the Taiwan company to develop a uh, third party tool for, to make the carter reach and calculation more easy and also this project is supported by the uh, uh, project from Taiwan so the principle is that we are labeling the atrium and the ventricle it's called the ROI region of interest in selection so after you labor in the ROI and later the two can report in the signal change in the atrium or in the ventricle automatically so all you have to do just one click of the ROI and later the data will come in so the operation will uh, relative uh, easy and we also compare our data from the image J as the golden standard and later we comparison for our develop tool it's called the RV visual pause so the pattern and also the, uh, the the data is quite consistent for example we do the Pearson correlation actually the R square is equivalent to one so it's been highly correlated so this is the short video to show you how to uh, uh, operation first the user's installation of the software and after extraction of the uh, of the software your installation of your uh, image you just open the image and loading into the software for example you can see here we got the zebra embryo here so the first thing you have to do just to selection the ROI the region of interesting in here for example here maybe the atrium so you can type in this is the atrium so later you can show in the uh, the position of the ventricle so you are typing for the uh, ventricle so later we are just analyzed you can see the pig is coming and also you can find two of the pig height to make balance of two signal one arch and one ventricle so eventually the data will output as this one okay so this is the two signal from the arch or ventricle so basically this operation really uh, simple so after we establish this method we would like to screen in some chemical library for example we are starting for the ion channel library so what is the uh we call the cardiac signal actually this signal for example from the ecg from the adult so the zebrafish ecg is very similar to human ecg so we have four major signal big we call the pqrst so each interval actually got some information for example if the uh, signal is the normal one it's like this one if the heartbeat faster we call tachycardia if the heartbeat slow down we call the brachycardia so what is the major principle for the ecg if we're looking for the single cell at a single cell level so this is we call the action potential of the cardiac muscle we are looking like this one so this is the uh, potential of minus 19 in the resting stages but after the signal be activating so later you can see the sodium pump opening so we have the sodium influx so later the uh, potential will getting higher but after this faster opening later will come with the uh, potassium channel opening so the uh, we call the membrane potential will go getting back to the minus level and finally the calcium and the potassium exchange opening and later the potassium channel we call the refractory potassium channel opening eventually will uh, force the membrane potential back to the minus 19. so according to this picture we know the cardiac reason is associated with the potas potassium channel calcium channel so my idea that we are able to use in some channel blocker to block the function of this channel so supposedly can induce in the uh, function abnormality of the cardiac 
uh, uh, reason or heartbeat. So in this consideration, we ordering the chemical from the company Enzo. This is called the ion channel library. So the chemical number will around uh, 70. So we just doing the uh, incubation with the zebra fish. And later we analyze the time chronology of the heartbeat after exposure to this chemical. So this is the chemical list. We have the uh, blue color code as the calcium channel blocker and red code as the uh, another calcium channel blocker. The green code is the potassium channel. The orange like this one is the sodium channel blocker. And the other one is like the micellar uh, channel blocker. So after we doing the screening around 70 compound, we found some chemical, especially for the calcium channel blocker, is really severe. After be blocking, you can see the heartbeat, the heartbeat rate will going to almost zero. So it means the heartbeat already stopped after the uh, calcium channel be blocking. So what is the compound? Actually, after we summarize, we found the four compound from the calcium uh, library and two compound from the uh, intracellular calcium or the potassium channel blocker. So after we do the molecular do docking, we found most of the uh, chemical actually can interaction with one protein. It's called L-type calcium channel, LTCC. Because the LCTD, LTCC have two domain, functional domain. It's called the domain four and domain three. And after do molecular docking, we found this six compound actually can interaction in this domain so can interference their function. So this paper we already published in 2019. As the cardiac reason and the molecular docking started of the ion channel ligand with the cardiac toxicity and zebra fish. So this paper we do in the, uh, uh, we call the in silico docking started and also the uh, in vivo zebra fish toxicity started. So the uh, result is quite interesting. And later we come with the, we call the uh, blood flow checking. So we using the uh, special equipment, we call the high speed CCD that able to recording the blood flow. This video show you the blood flow in the, uh, we call the dorsal aorta and also in the uh, pectoral cardinal vein. So you can find after slowdown of the flow rate, you can see the uh, blood flow in the artery or in the vein. Even we can see the uh, blood flow like this one. This is the single uh, red blood cell uh, in the capillary. So using this high specificity, CCD, the resolution is really good. And also we can look in the detail of blood flow. And this is done by my student, Theo and Bonnie. So the basic principle is very easy. We set up uh, inverted microscopy and covering with the high speed CCD here. And later to increasing of the enhancement of the contrast, we using the Hoffman contrast modulating lens. So the principle for this lens, you can see here, the light pass in the normal condition is the perfect lens. But in the Hoffman modulation, the light will be blocked in, uh, maybe for example, in the right, uh, left side, but in the right side, they are opening. So this design can make the uh, image is more stereo like this one. So you don't have to stand in of the zebrafish embryo. So the signal can be uh, enhanced. The contrast can be enhanced by the uh, by this uh, Hoffman lens. So we use in this setting that we focus on the dorsal aorta here or in the pectoral cardinal vein. So we found if the blood come into this ROI area, so the pixel uh, uh, pixel number or the pixel intensity will getting higher. But after the blood flow go uh, uh, a pass and later this empathy in this area, so the signal going down. So if we uh, detection the signal over time, we are able to find 
the signal dynamic in the dorsal aorta is quite dynamic. Sometimes getting higher, sometimes getting lower. So getting higher is mean the blood is goes through this ROI. And compared to the dorsal aorta, we found the signal intensity or the dynamic pixel change in the uh, cardinal vein is relatively lower. So in this consideration, we always detect the signal from the dorsal aorta because the signal is more robust. So by using this technology, we are able to uh, calculate some inf important information. For example, we can uh, a measurement for the heart rate. A heart rate. The heart rate can be measurement from the uh, heart. And we also can uh, measurement for the shock volume. Because the shock volume uh, is the one bit, how many milliliters of the blood pumping out from the heart. And also we are able to uh, calculate for the cardiac output by multiply with the heart rate with the shock volume. So basically all of the important parameter we can be uh, calculated by this formulation and to measurement the cardiac physiology in zebrafish. And here I want to take two examples to show you the importance of this setting. For example, we're using the MS222. This chemical can slow down of the heart rate and also can uh, reduce in the shock volume. So after we uh, multiply heart rate shock volume, so total cardiac output will reduce him. But the other chemical called the IBMX here, they can increase in the heart rate. You can see here, increasing the uh, heart rate, but they will uh, reduce in the shock volume here. So eventually, after multi multiply together, the IBMX can reduce in the cardiac output. So the cardiac output, you can see here, is going down. Actually, it's quite complex comprehension. Maybe the heart rate, shock volume going down, or the heart rate going down, shock volume, no differences, or heart rate, no differences, but shock volume going down, or this getting higher, this getting lower, or let's go in lower, this getting higher. So this complicated uh, situation tell us we have to measure the heart rate, shock volume, and the cardiac output together. This will be more nicely a uh, measurement for the cardiac physiology uh, uh, alteration. Okay, finally, I would like to tell you one story is our new finding is using the GHK tripeptide that one can prevention of the cardiac toxicity from the copper. So what is the, uh, we call the GHK peptide. Actually, this is one, uh, we're looking for the the copper, because the copper actually is quite a toxicity, quite toxic to the aquatic animal. My student, Nami, already writing some review article published in Nano Material uh, this year. You can, in this paper, you can find the copper will coming from the industrial. And this copper may be released into the water and aquatic animal exposure to the copper, especially for the a copper ion is quite toxic. And also maybe the copper nanoparticle is also toxic. So in this consideration, we would like to use in some uh, copper chelating agent to, uh, to protection of the uh, toxicity uh, triggered by the copper. And one target we selected is called the blue copper peptide. What is the blue copper peptide? Actually, uh, they are the tripeptide, G, H, K. Glycyl, histio, and lysine. So this is the short peptide. Actually, it's been circulated, found in uh, circulation in our blood flow. And the people using the uh, tripeptide and the coupling with the copper, and in the scientific already be proved, this chemical is good for the anti-inflammatory activity and also have the good anti-agent activity and also be found can promoting the skin wood healing and also even can promoting the uh, DNA repair response. So nowadays the blue copper peptide already be using as a cosmetics or the healthy food ingredient. 
So in this consideration, my student, Ferry, and my cooperator, Kevin, we would like to uh, over expression of the recombinant GHK peptide and using is a high potent chemical to against the acute cardiotoxicity uh, triggered by the copper in zebra fish. So this is the pipeline. We first we design some recombinant protein by fusing with the histidine tag and glutathione tag, and later we doing the uh, uh, the column purification. And later we identification of their physical uh, uh, of their chemical property, and later we test in in vivo in zebra fish to see their detoxification uh, capacity, especially folks on the hard physiology uh, change like the heartbeat, like the shock volume, cardiac output, and so on. The first. We using the recombinant protein approach to a uh, bulky synthesize of the GHK short peptide. So this is the histine tag in the end terminal, and later come with the big glutathione, and later come with the TEV cleavage uh, site, and the GHK tripeptide is linking in the C terminal. So after we uh, production of this protein, we will using the TEV enzyme to digest this uh, recombinant protein, eventually the GHK tripeptide can release in from the recombinant protein. And this cartoon show you the uh, GHK tripeptide interaction with the free copper in this architecture here. So in the purification, we using the SDS page to check for the purity. So after purification, you can see this is the glutathione GHK fusion protein in here. It's quite bulky, synthesized. And after uh, purification, we use the HPLC standard to compare with the uh, unpurified impurity or the purified GHK. We found the purity is quite high. And later we use in the LC mask to identification of the uh, identity and we can find the major pick here is consistent and later we are uh, using the copper to uh, detection there uh, we call the binding ratio we found they are binding to the copper in the one to one equivalent will be the most uh, uh, high highest signal as showing here so supporting they can bind in a one GHK peptide binding with the one molecule of the a free copper. And later we use in the zebra fish to do the cardiac toxicity assay. So this is the we call the protocol. We incubation with the copper from day uh, day one, 24 hour and continue to day four. So we found LC50 level for the copper is really low. So it means the copper is quite toxic to zebra fish. The LC50 level is around maybe a PP, uh, 1 ppm. It's equivalent to maybe 28 nanometer. And later we using some formulation, a mathematic formulation to calculate the cardiac physiology like the uh, cardiac output, cardiac uh, stroke volume according to, to this uh, formulation. So this picture to show you actually the after we doing the uh, control, this is the called the GHK zero or copper zero can be considered as a control. So the heart rate per minute is around maybe 160. But after copper treatment, so you can find the copper uh, zero, uh, the G zero copper ten is mean the copper treatment as a ten. Uh, nanomolar, so you can see the reduction of the heart rate. But after copper 10 and a GHK1, GHK10, GHK100, so you can see the rescue effect of the heart rate. And this phenomena also can be found in other parameter. So the conclusion is the GHK tripeptide can rescue the cardiac toxicity triggered by copper ion in zebra fish. And also we found, this is the, we call the heartbeat dimension in the long axis 
or the short axis. And this is the, uh, we call the heart rate uh, beating interval uh, standard deviation. So if the heart rate irregular, the standard deviation we're getting higher, we found in the control, the standard deviation in the short axis or long axis is at around 2.02 uh, .02 level here. But after exposure to the copper 10 nanomolar, you can see the standard deviation getting higher. It means the fish got cardiac beating irregularity. But after exposure to GHK peptide, so the SD level uh, uh, rescue going back to the normal condition. So after statistic, there's no differences with the control. So we can make conclusion is the GHK tripeptide can rescue the cardiac irregularity triggered by the copper ion in zebrafish. So I would like to make summary of my talk today. The first one I show you, we can use in some algorithm to detection zebrafish cardiac region by image J, and this method is quite low cost. And later I use in this method to screen in some chemical library, it's called ion channel blocker, and found six compound can interference with the a heartbeat. And later we use in the image J algorithm again to do the blood flow checking that able to detect the detail of cardiac and the vascular physiology in the profession. And finally, I use in the, uh, the method to screen in uh, or to validate the function of the GHK tripeptide. Eventually, we found this GHK tripeptide is really good to do the cardiac protection function in zebrafish. And this is the first finding of this tripeptide function in the zebrafish. So I'm happy to share you the, uh, my story today and to, I hope to see you again in the city. Thank you.